Congratulations to the two of you on that. Are there, how many years is it for you in music now, looking back? From the very beginning that people didn't know. From the, yeah. this is my 10th year. 10th year. And, and they say good things happen in the 10th year. I think good so, things are happening, so right? 10 years. Um, what about you, Mr. The first, the first ever time I entered the studio was in 2013. Uh -huh. um, and then, say officially 2016, no, sorry, December 2015. Mm -hmm. So it's between two to three years of like, yeah, non -stop, yeah. recording. So when you look back, are there any um, collaborations that you've done with African artists that really impacted you as a creative? and also impacted your career. So if you look back in the 10 years, if you look back from um, 2013 you mentioned, is there any collaboration with an African artist that you're like, actually that changed things for me? Um, for me, I'd say, you know, I've been, a, my career has been a testament of collaborations. Um, even in 2016, in 2013, First time I go into the studio, between 2013 and 2015, I wasn't an artist, I was just this guy they used to call to do hooks. Mm -hmm. So I was this Nigerian boy in, in Ghana, and because they want some Nigerian slang or some Yoruba, they would call me. So I scored uh, uh, features on, that I can remember very vividly, the ones that really changed things. One with um, an artist called Stay J, was a Ghanaian rapper, singer, songwriter, producer, and another with Sakodie, uh, one of the most decorated African rappers um, out of Ghana. But I'd, I'd say it was the Sakode one that started to put, you know, me on the map, and um, I would go on to have collaborations in 2015, 2016 with other Ghanaian acts like Afia and Joey B and uh, Papi Kojo, but what those things did was it positioned me in a way where a lot of people thought I was Ghanaian. Mm. And it sort of created from the very onset a dual fan base for me. So instantly I had, you know, Ghanaian fans, and as a Nigerian, I had Nigerian fans at the base. So I'd like to think that kind of set the tone for my career, which is like a cross country yeah. from Nigeria, two countries in between, um, and then Ghana. Um, what about you? Um, I've been working as a producer for a, like my whole career was me as a producer and then yeah. as an artist. And so in 2016 was probably one of the first times that I did a collaboration with someone who's not from here, but in terms of Africa. But because before that we'd done the Fela Koti remixes with, uh, what's it called, Red Hot and Riot, which was just a band and Childish Gambino and just a band and Chance the Rapper. But this was now me as Blinky with Ero Maniello, who's a house producer from South Africa, who I've just always really liked. And now on this project is where now, I've, this new project is where I've properly collaborated with artists that I admire and I feel like we are on the same like trajectory. So last year I was in Nigeria and I, I was DJing at some shows there. And then it was me and Neka, we were in a panel and then we got a studio session. I was like, yo, can I, can I play you some stuff? Then I played her two songs, and one I knew that, she, one was the automatic one that I felt that she was gonna like, and then she, did, she was like, I don't like that. But then the other one, which was like very hip hop beat, but very like gangster, that's the one she liked, and she, she didn't even go to, she didn't even write her, uh, her lyrics down. She just went to the booth and spit. And then she, but she, I left there with two songs, so we put that one out last year, and then this other one has just come out. But it's me, Petit Noah, and Neka. And we, me and my band just came back from tour in Europe. 
and people know Petit Noir so well. Yeah. So like everyone was like, Petit Noir is on your record. That like now I'm feeling it. So I'm just like I'm also on the record. <laughs> I was too. good already. Yeah, but it it does change things and it makes it it opens the conversation because for an artist from Nairobi, we've not the, who's like I'm mostly alternative mm -hmm. music and we haven't had that proper opportunity to to collaborate in that sense. But I've also made a lot of friends over the years. And so we're definitely going to do more. Um, what do you think comes first when you're looking at collaborations? Is it first like, you know, we vibe and I, this person is really creative. They're kind of having synergies with my creative journey. Or are you thinking more strategy of, I need to break into the Tanzanian market. I need to break into, you know, what comes first? I think it's, it's not one shoe fits all. For instance, in 2016, I went out to play in Tanzania, and then I met this talented artist called Ben Paul. And so we got in the studio. We didn't even we, we didn't even get in the studio. We didn't we didn't record. We just met, exchanged contacts, friends. He played his music. I watched people react to his music, and I, I, I traveled back. And one day he sent me a song called Phone. I did the verse, and. You know, the next time I went to Tanzania on holiday, he just found out I was in Tanzania. Boom, we shot the video real quick. And that ended up, I think he picked that number one at some point in Tanzania. But there was no coincide, like, in that case, there was no strategy to say, oh, I want to, of course, I want to work with artists from across Africa. But it was more of the friendship and the bond cost us to make music and but that's one case but for instance on this new project you see i've worked with and by the way that kind of opened the door i think for me in east africa and i began to see a lot of east african following after that record so even for that validate the effectiveness but on this project you see i have a song with diplo called um, open and close but there is if you're getting it in the south african market it's called Shasha Kushasha with Destruction Boys. And then that's the lead single in South Africa. And I've seen that it's even crossed over from being, I thought, and that was very deliberate. I went, I've been going to South Africa, I've been like, you know what, I love this gum scene. I need to do something there. I need, when I see the, the people dancing in the clubs and on the streets, I'm like, jeez, I need my own, you know? And that was more, deliberate even the release was deliberate so it's it's a mix here and there i think i like to vi vibe with whoever it is so i don't like to i'm never gonna do a collaboration with someone who i can't call mm -hmm. and be like we need we need that vast redone or we don't have that peer respect because I think it, those things can easily kill you in terms of you feel like you've worked with someone who's big and so it's going to do something for you. But if, you're, uh -huh. if you can't relate, <laughs> yeah. if, you can't, if they can't respond to your messages, then you're, it's a waste of time. It's like, yeah, oh, I did a song with whoever, yeah. but they Nothing didn't, they didn't push it. Yeah. It's just there. Yeah, for me, for me, it's a vibe. Like, there's a lady on my project. She's called Sampa the Great. She's from Australia, but from, born in Zambia. And I'd never met her before we started talking. But I liked her stuff, and I just messaged her I'm like, "Can we do something?" She was like, "Of course, I want to come to Kenya. I have a friend there." And then she recorded her verse, sent it. We went back and forth. And the first time I was meeting her was a week before my album came out. So, because she came to my show, and I told her, "I have a show in London. Are you gonna come?" And she's like, uh, "I don't know." But then when she was in the audience, she was like, "Man, I I wish I knew how you guys even sound live because n now I just wanted to jump on stage and rock." And so, even when I've asked her, "Can you come to Kenya? We do something," she's down. I'd I'd rather have 
that kind of relationship with an artist, like we vibe. And you're listening to both Mr. Easy and um, Blinky Bill talk about the collaborations. I think many people from the outside, because the impression we get of the industry is that if you want a collaboration, you have to pay. And you have to pay tons of money to get this one person on your track. And then we start thinking about, okay, where am I going to get that money from? Secondly, like the legal implications about that collaboration. But before we get to speaking legal, just the money aspect, because there's many younger artists who will feel like I can't approach somebody for a collaboration because I don't have the money, because it's assumed I have to pay a lot of money to get Mr. Easy on a track. Is that the case? Have you had to pay money? You know, the infrastructure of, of streaming and getting revenue from selling your record is not is not your built it's not your properly built in Africa and so even from from royalties mechanicals to publishing all of that so at the end of the day I'm, I'm a businessman I'm an artist as well so if I'm charging somebody in Africa and saying yo you need to pay this for vocal services you know we know we're working we're all working with limited budgets so that already brings the budget down. But I see when I do these collaborations, apart from the fact that, oh, I want to make music, I see it as a marketing swamp, even if it's with an emerging artist. And sometimes I even go to the point of funding. When, when an emerging artist crosses my radar and asks me, oh, Mr. Easy, I want to work with you, I even go to the point of saying, okay, do you have a budget? They're like, oh, I have a $1,000 budget. I'm like, you know what, I'll pay for the video because I want, I want to also be able to post it and my fans will not be like, what is this guy doing? So, <laughs> I'm sorry, sometimes I just talk out of, out of heart. I'm so sorry. You know, but in terms of African collaborations, I tend not to charge. Uh, even right now, like, you know, we just launched, we're just talking backstage, the Empower yeah. project where I'll be funding 100 African emerging art artists funding their videos. So that just shows you. But when I do international yeah. collaborations, yo, you got to pay for those vocal services. <laughs> you got you to gotta put the right publishing split. You yeah. got to put the right points. Yeah. Because I know we're all making money from all these points. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So my question is about your journey as an artist. What are some of the key challenges that you faced and how did you uniquely overcome it um, in a way that's enabled you to get to where you are today? I had a uh, band called Just A Band and when we started out, our music was not radio friendly. So I took it to some radio stations and we were told, guys are not ready for this, so it's not going to work. So we had to figure out how else do we get to talk to the people who could possibly like this outside of radio? And eventually, so sometimes even that conversation, like radio is really important, but we are also living in a time where things are changing super fast. So there's a lot more power that's available to an artist. And so that was one of the big challenges. Then also, because the sound was very new, just having to almost like grow an audience. And it's been a journey for like the past few years. But one of the cool things is that it's, it's taken off nicely and it's growing and there's a loyal audience. And that's, that's what I would always ask for. I just want people who like my stuff to be loyal to it and I'll always keep feeding them the best material that I could possibly give them. What collaborations will do is bridge the gaps, just the way I collaborate with Major Laser, and then we put it on Major Laser YouTube and put it on my YouTube, and we do, we, I appear on some of his their dates and they appear on some of my dates. I feel like that's a working formula for how we should start working of the ideal way to work across Africa, where the collaboration goes beyond making the music, but we start merging, touring. 
when I decided who I wanted to actually do this music, it was about putting out the music and from radio to TV to everything. But like he said, I just focused on what I have in my hands, which was the internet. And for instance, I put my, my first mixtape, About to Blow, I put it on SoundCloud and just kept sharing it on Twitter, sharing it. I'm sorry, I was spamming people. Like, you say, I love Nigerian music. Poof, here's a good Nigerian music. I'm not saying you should do that. It doesn't work every time. You know, but doing stuff like that, and it was by that same way I found Jules. So Jules was a, is a producer in the UK, Ghanaian-born producer in the UK. And Jules just found my music that I had tweeted I had sent it to somebody, and somebody has retweeted, and he hit the SoundCloud link, and he heard it, and he called me. I wasn't even, I wasn't even doing music. He hit me up and said, send me the stems of your song, Banku Lies. I want to I wanna remake it. And he, he remade it. He got a feature on it, and that was the beginning of my career. So just work with what you have. I am representing This Is Africa, and there's a whole concept about borderless Africa. Um, connecting African countries, um, African identity. So my question to you guys is, what place do you feel like music has in terms of creating, I know we have different identities from different countries, but that solid African identity with Pan-African collaborations. Sometimes people don't have to even talk to you. Like them just existing and doing their thing is, can be inspiring. I remember watching HHP videos and just watching him like there's a song called music and lights double HP and just coming up and watching that song made me feel like oh man we don't all have to sound the same and so that's for me what I've always taken like to, to push it to the max. It's like, we don't have to sound the same. I'm going to do my thing regardless of whether, wherever it goes. And be that was because of that, just watching this guy and then eventually watching all these other artists do their thing. And so in terms of, because you're aware of like Tandiswa and Asha Neka and all these other guys, like we are part of this story and we have something to contribute to the pot. So we don't all have to say the same thing, but the pot is like we are cooking all these dope things and we are adding to it. So that's how I feel. You know, music is enshrined in the African man or woman's way of life. Like it's a form of cultural expression. So it's part that you cannot, you cannot differentiate your identity and you like my identity and say like it's not related to my music you know so as Afri as african artists making african music and this cross cross these collaborations i feel if it's doing anything it's just further like enshrining um our identity and you could see it's happening it doesn't even have to be via um, the actual music, but you can see dance, for instance, has been, you know, uniting, you know, the African scene and also, you know, projecting the African scene. And a lot of times when you see people from across the world relating with African music, most times the first way they are relating with it is through dance. Like, it is unavoidable from Shaku Shaku to Odi Dance to um, guara Guara to in Tanzania I saw some people dancing and falling down and, <laughs> you know so I feel like it's not just the music the, it's, it's, it's one and all collaboration or not it's already part of our identity and there's nothing we can do to stop it, it we, we could only we can't even, it's promoting itself I can't say there's anybody doing it because it's, it's part of our culture Right on, ladies and gentlemen, can we give these panelists a big round of applause?